What's up guys? So today it is the 6th of December and the time is, not that it matters for this video anyway, but the time is 12.39. Oh yeah, I got a new phone. So now I can actually respond to things properly. But anyway, it's like one o'clock, I haven't had any food. I've been planning this video all morning. Um, it's something that I get asked quite often, quite frequently, and I'm trying to be, uh, put more informational things out into my channel because you see me training, you see me doing all these things, but um, it, you can res you can relate to it a lot more if you actually know what I'm doing or what I or like information that helps it. So this video is going to be the complete guide to lean bowling. <laughs> So let's get started. If I make any YouTube video, let's just, I just write it all down, write points down. These are all like dot points and just things that I think are beneficial to say. So number one, is pick your goal and assess your physique. Like do you need a bulk or cut? Because I see too many people who ask me, should, should I start bulking? And they're already holding too much body fat or how, they, how can they increase their calories? There's no point bulking if you're already holding too much body fat. If you can't see abs, be honest with yourself, if you know you look flabby. Oh, mate. Stop messaging me. Yeah, so be honest with yourself. If you know you look flabby, if you know your body, you're actually holding a bit of excess body fat, it's not gonna be beneficial for you to go and uh, start bulking or even lean bulking. So my advice to you would be to cut down, slowly cut down the calories and then start again. So it's almost like you reset your whole physique and that way you'll be able to gauge better muscle gains without out putting on uh, excess fat that you already have. So that's just bulking when you already have holding excess fat is just like a recipe for disaster. So just reset your physique, cut down a bit and go from there. It works for the opposite. If you're already lean enough, there's no point in cutting. Like you cannot gain muscle naturally in a deficit. Like if you're lean enough already, there's no need for you to cut. Okay, so number two, track your lean bulk. Okay, so if you're not tracking your weight, so at the start of each week, right from when you decide to start lean bulking, track your weight. And to lean bulk, a good weight that you want to gain is quarter of a kilo, so 0.25 kilograms to 0.5 kilograms a week. If you're gaining this much between these two a week, you are gaining lean muscle and you're not going to put on excess fat if you gain above that to a kilo kilo and a half there's like you're just going to be putting on way too much fat like there's no there's no possible way you can be putting on a kilo of pure muscle in a week so obviously bulking even lean bulking you're going to put on minimal amounts of fat but a successful lean bulk is when you put on a minimal amount of fat and excess amount of muscle just each week write down your weight on the start of this week and then next week, keep checking, keep checking. If you're gaining a quarter of a kilo to half a kilo, then you know you're doing it correctly. A great success. And just keep track of your physique, physically, what it looks like from a physical standpoint as well. You need to eat enough to grow. You need to eat the correct amount as well. Don't overload your calories. Like, especially in a lean bulk, there's a fine line between lean bulking and overloading because it's to tracking your weight each week. If you are eating a certain number of calories and you're seeing that you're gaining between a quarter of a kilo to half a kilo, you know that you're eating the right amount of calories, which can help. If you are not tracking your weight and you're not, you're not, you're not seeing, but you're just eating these calories, you could be gaining a kilo, two kilos a week, and you could just be stacking on fat. Like I said, track your weight each week and also track your calories daily. So if you see that you're gaining the correct amount of weight each week and you're eating these calories, you know that you're eating the right amount of calories, the right macros, hopefully, but I'll get into that later. So that can help a lot. So if you're, if they're in correlation with each other and they're working, then you know you're doing the right thing. Obviously, to lean bulk, you need to be in a caloric surplus. So you've been, you need to be eating more calories per day than your body naturally needs. Like I've said a thousand times before, use my fitness pal to track your calories each day, your meals, um, just type into the absolute my fitness pal, it's free. There is a premium version, but you can use this one for free. For me personally, what's worked, I've always, when I've lean bulked, I've tried an error. Sometimes I've gone way over, sometimes I've gone way under, but um, I usually eat 10% surplus or a 15% surplus of my 
daily maintenance calories, which is around 2,500. Obviously, you gotta use trial and error, if, especially if you've never done it before. It'll be hard for you to initially gauge what how your body responds, but after a while, you'll be able to understand and you'll become a master of it. It's obviously, it's honestly not that hard. You just need to track, like honestly, tracking is so important because then you can, once you track, you can take care of every other little aspect and you can tweak things. And without tracking, you're pretty much just, it's training for, a, it'd be like training for a friggin' marathon for six months and then not doing the marathon at all. It's just, you need to, you need to track. If you're lean bulking, one thing I can't stress enough is don't neglect cardio. Like, I enjoy cardio personally. So even when I'm really, really put, trying to put on some weight, I still do cardio because I enjoy it. Just from, from a physical standpoint, if you're looking at it from a physical standpoint in terms of it, you're looking in the mirror, obviously cardio is going to be super beneficial when trying to stay lean if you're doing cardio. Well, I do cardio mostly. I want my cardiovascular fitness to be to still be there because in the gym, if you are working out good cardiovascular fitness, your heart will be able to have an increased ability to pump your blood around your body and into your muscles. And also, you'll be able to get more oxygen into your cells and muscles, so it'll in increase your endurance in the gym almost. So like, you know when you're doing, say your endurance is how long you can go on for. You do one set, you're good. Two sets, you're good. Three sets, you really start to get tired. With good, with good muscular endurance, you can keep going. You don't get tired until six sets, seven sets. It's, that is muscular endurance. And, and having a good cardiovascular fitness base really, really helps that. I would recommend for cardio, two to three sessions of low intensity steady state walks for maybe 30 to 45 minutes per week. You burn the most fat when you're at a sub-maximal intensity exercise. So low intensity steady state for me, I always do low intensity steady state unless I really want to change it up. But sub-maximal intensity is when you burn the most fat. So obviously you want to be doing a sub-maximal intensity exercise, which is walking. Progressive overload. I've talked a lot about progressive overload in a lot of my videos, but what it essentially is, is continually upping the reps or either upping the weight or upping the sets of your workout. If you are continually progressively overloading your workouts with either weight, sets or reps, you're going to get stronger, you're going to get bigger, and strength gains usually result in muscle gains. So if you feel like you're getting stronger, if you know you're getting stronger, then you're then most likely you are getting you are getting bigger. Keep pushing yourself in the gym. Just because you're eating in a surplus doesn't mean you're gonna grow muscle no matter what. You need to keep pushing yourself to that next limit in the gym each time. Train heavy, train high volume. High volume, from my opinion, is a must when trying to grow muscle. Macros and calories. With a lean bulk, you want to be fairly conservative with what you're doing. There is no point overloading on your calories because you will just gain excess amount of fat. It is better when you're lean bulking to be eating less than you think you need than more than you think you need because if, you, if you're eating less, you won't gain the excess fat. If you're eating more, you will. So for protein, protein should stay fairly consistent. Like I've said before, one gram to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. Carbohydrates are tough to nail down exactly. Everybody has a different intake, especially how you train really affects your how much carbohydrates you need. Um, but for myself, when I'm lean bulking, I usually have between 1.5 grams to 1.75 grams of carbohydrates per pound of body weight that I have. Also with carbohydrates, you wanna keep on the conservative side because if you overload the carbs and you're not having enough protein and fats, you will most likely gain excess fat. But once again, it all comes down to the calories. With fats, they are really, really, really super important because if you drop your fats too low, your hormone levels will go crazy, you won't gain any muscle, you'll be demotivated for the gym, you won't want to go. If I'm lean bulking, for me, I have them anywhere between 75 to 95. I, don't, I feel like going over 100, if you have your carbs up there and your protein up there, is a bit over, is a bit unnecessary. If you have lower carbs and higher fat, that could work for you. Once again, trial and error, everybody does it differently, but that's my opinion on that. A lot of people don't think about this, especially me, I really need to practice what I preach here, but sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, six to eight hours, you're not gonna be growing as much as you can. Like the amount of gains I've probably lost because I've gotten less sleep, like it's kind of depressing to think about. But you guys know what I mean. You need to get sleep because that's when you grow the most. If you're not getting adequate sleep, adequate recovery time, your muscles aren't gonna have enough time to repair and you're just not gonna be motivated for the gym in the next day. If you're always constantly tired, like I've been there before, like going to the gym just 
if you're already a bit in a bad state about going to the gym and then you're extra tired from not enough sleep, it's just, you, there's no way that you're gonna wanna go to the gym. So make sure that you get enough sleep, enough recovery, you're stretching, you're icing, you're doing all these things to make sure that your recovery process is sped up and just try to be the most efficient bodybuilder, fitness athlete, whatever you are, just try to be the most efficient at what you're doing. It's something that might not apply to everybody, but meal timing. Meal timing, in my opinion, is not the be all end all of anything, to be honest. I always know I have around, I have around 30% of my carbohydrates before my workout, and around and the and the remaining 70 post workout after the workout towards the end of the day what you need to do is you need to time your carbs your proteins and your fats in correlation with your workout so that you can have the most efficient workout possible and post workout possible you do not need in meal t in terms of meal timing to go right 8 o'clock breakfast 9 o'clock meal 1 10 o'clock meal 2 that is just unnecessary and it'll drain you, it'll drain you mentally. But what you need to do is time your carbs and your proteins and your fats around your workouts for the most efficient workout possible. Okay, so some tips. Be patient with everything. Everything that's worth having in bodybuilding or fitness, health, comes slowly. If you, the, the faster you gain it, the more fat you're gonna be putting on, most likely, the slower, the slower you actually gain this weight, the more it's just gonna be, the more percentage of muscle it will be than fat. So if, you, if you're looking at the scales and you're only, gra you're only gaining 0.2 of a kilo per week, if you're a beginner, it's gonna be 8% muscle and 20% fat. Obviously, you can't avoid, with lean bulking, anything to do with bulking, anything in a caloric surplus at all, when you're eating above what you naturally need in a day, you're gonna be gaining fat. It's just, you can't avoid it. It's just gonna happen and you need to accept the fact that it's gonna happen. But a successful lean bulk is having the minimal amount of fat, like I've said. A minimal amount of fat gain and a maximal amount of muscle gain. And really, you'll be surprised at the results. Like, you won't gain as much fat as you think if you do it correctly. All right, guys, I know this was a shorter video. I wanted to get this out done. I wanted to get this done quickly and like efficiently and just put the information that I needed and not ramble on too much. Um, I really hope you guys can benefit from this. Uh, if you want me to do a more in-depth video into bulking, over, like excess bulking, shredding, anything, um, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you take something away from this because I don't do these videos for nothing. So if you guys enjoyed this, please leave it a like. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be doing, I'm also gonna be doing another video tomorrow that'll be up later in the week about training and just basic training principles for air that you can use when you start and things like that. So yes, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Jets, but all we want to know is where the party at. And can I bring my gas? If not, I hope I don't get shot. Better throw my vest on my chest, cause niggas is a mess. It